welcome everybody. Um, we're about to start. So, um, welcome to AHA Biz. This is our daily 30-minute briefings on bleeding edge insights and practices that shape our new normal. So, we're rounding up actionable best practices from business leaders to help you level up the way you take care of your people, your customers, and partners as demanded by these business unusual times. So my name is Chini, and I'll be facilitating today's open discussion together with Dandy and Mina. Say hi, guys. Hi. Hi. And we also have our resident bulldog, Andre. Say hi. Hi. You got to come up with a new name for me soon. <laughs> okay. So I just want to interrupt um, Chini for a bit. Um, this is a special episode of AHA Biz um, because we are featuring two case studies from the um, shopping mall industry. So that's our oh. theme, our topic for today. What shopping mall industry? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so just to remind you guys, um, some of the business leaders we interview speak based on their own personal experience. So we will have to preserve their company's anonymity. But as long as we take home uh, key learnings that we can use in our in our businesses, that's all that matters, really. Okay, so as Dandy said, the, the special episode is dedicated to malls. So without further ado, let's get the ball rolling, starting with Dandy. Take it away. Okay, I'll start right ahead. My AHA hero today is the head of leasing for one of the biggest shopping malls in the Philippines with over more than with more than 40 existing properties all over the country. So what's their COVID context? Um, as we know, all of their malls are currently closed, except for the essential retail stores like supermarkets, pharmacies, and banks. Right now, they have a five-point action plan that covers um, all of their stakeholders and for them to combat um, this uh, pandemic. Specifically, this five-point action plan are as follows. One, survivability, which involves taking care of the company's solvency and liquidity. The second is caring for people which includes financial assistance programs, um, not just for their, for their direct employees, but also for their daily wage earners, such as security guards, housekeeping, and cinema staff. Third is serving their customers, the customers meaning both store owners and mall goers. Just making sure that company regularly announces mall updates, enforces social distancing and hygiene sanitation. Fourth is helping others, of course, this includes raising funds, not just for the frontliners, but also for the poor communities most affected by the crisis. And fifth is thinking ahead, basically how they will recover, collaborating with their partner companies and retailers to prepare for the new normal, for the market restart. So let me go to my AHA number one. Based off of that five-point action plan, um, one of the AHAs that I um, um, uncovered is one walking the talk. What does that mean? In these times of crisis, it's sort of like a litmus test for the values that the company upholds. So for this company, it's that value of malasakit for which they walk the talk um, during this crisis. As you can see, or as I have mentioned, um, caring for people is the sec is second priority in their action plan, which speaks volumes of um, how they really um, take the value of malasakit seriously. Um, so aside from what I mentioned earlier, the financial assistance that they give to their employees, and of course, the continuous salary, they also have a 24-7 hotline for employees who experience symptoms of COVID and their partner clinic. Because as you know, this um, mall chain is part of a bigger conglomerate, which has various partners in different sectors. So their partner clinic is ready to accept PUI employees. They also value mental health, sending out regular emails to help the people cope with stress and panic. And, and these are just small things. But for example, for the cooperative program, they have suspended and postponed the payments for that, which is a, a big relief for their employees. Um, ultimately, one of their motivations for remaining liquid is so that they won't have to lay off their people, going as far as reducing the pay of the higher-ups. So that's really... But as you can see, that's how they really value their people. Well, particularly for these for these small operators, no, because uh, they're gonna be the la they're they're gonna be the last to come out of this uh, community quarantine. Yes. Okay. They're going to be the last. Yeah. So they better 
yeah, it's going to be the long run for them. So it will be very interesting how many of the five point um, action plans get uh, sustained as exactly. uh, as this war of nerves uh, uh, persists. You know, and like I said, they'll be the last out of this quarantine, which is not good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, according to my to my aha hero, um, he says that sooner or later. The, the mall industry or, or, or mall chains will always be there because people are social beings. People will always want to congregate one way or another, um, maybe not in the soon soonest future, but eventually. So they see that their importance in that role in the Philippine economy at least. So at least... Yeah. I, I think uh, there, there's no doubt. It's just that um, from a timetable perspective, the, the, the malls are going to be the worst of the lot of all of us being uh, quarantined no? because they're the most non-essential and they're the most difficult to crowd control, right? Yeah. You might have um, smaller retail stores, independent retail stores starting to open, but malls that conglomerate so many people and so many tenants, uh, my guess is it's going to be the longest time. But to your point and to your hero's point, yes, it's going to be uh, the, the role of malls, especially, I mean, we have, I think, per capita, the highest number of malls in the whole wide world, the Philippines. So I don't think malls will go away. But from an AHA biz perspective, I am in utter suspense how the mall industry is going to evolve itself, given what happened, given the new normal. Because I don't think uh, malls should just reopen and be the way they've always been. So it'll be very interesting. Uh, we will be eager watchers from an AHA biz perspective, how malls, not just this mall, but all their other competitors evolve and come out of this. So yeah. thanks for So that's a good segue to my second AHA, actually. And this focuses on their fifth, uh, their fifth bullet and their action plan. I'm just thinking ahead. So my second AHA is Synergy. Um, they recognize that, I, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, this this uh, mall chain is part of a bigger conglomerate that holds a portfolio of diver diverse business interests. So to prepare for the market reopening and the slow, uh, and also to assist their partner retailers, they are tapping into their partner companies and enabling synergies in order to help these retail partners survive the market. Uh, okay, so, for example? For example, um, for the restaurant partners, um, they project that the businesses will involve more takeout and delivery service. So not only are they sharing knowledge right now and best practices to the restaurant owners, um, but also they are tapping to their partner logistics company to help their these restaurants in the future. Okay. So All right. Any other examples? Yeah. For their clothing retailers, naman, um, they see synergies with their partner e-commerce shopping site. Okay. These are just examples of how these collaborations Collaborations will manifest in order for the companies to help each other survive the new normal. Bottom line here really is, um, of course, they know that their partner partner retailers are the lifeblood of their of these malls. So they're doing their best to help these um, businesses cope with the next normal. Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think we're ready for your score now, Andre. Four out of five. Very interesting topic. Hey, thanks, Andre. Can I, can I know who the mall is? Okay, so funny that you should mention that you're curious about how um, how these malls will somehow change the way they do their business now that um, you know conglomerate conglomerate eh, um, people gathering together would be. Um, a big risk right now. So I guess this is a perfect segue actually to Mina's AHA hero. So um, Mina, if you could take it away. And we're only doing two today, right? Yes, we're only we are. doing two case studies today. Okay, go, go ahead. Yes. Okay, Mina. Okay, so thanks, Chini. So my marketing, my AHA hero for today is a marketing and events executive who is in charge of events and live activations in a major mall chain. So this is a different call from the one that we shared. Okay. So their COVID context. Sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, in charge of what? Marketing? Marketing and events. I see. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so as you know, Andre, just to be background, 
um, events are one of the main marketing um, instruments of malls in order to attract people. Yeah. Not yeah. for people to go to their malls. I have to go to the mall. Okay. Yeah. So this is the COVID context. So because of the lockdown and the social distancing efforts of the government in order to fight the spread and of course to flatten the curve, all their activities lined up for the rest of the year were scrapped. So this include mall-wide sales that should have been done no March 13 to 15, a day after um, Duterte mentioned that uh, Duterte announced that there will be a community quarantine, Women's Month celebration, Earth Hour, everything is scrapped. So, okay, so that, that, that makes sense for the immediate time period, but you said they already made the, the decision to cut the rest of the year? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh okay, up, like up to December? Yeah, yeah. Really? So yeah. no more no more Christmas, uh, you know, those shop, those, um, what do we call it? Uh, payday weekends leading up to Christmas. Yeah. They canceled yeah. that? Okay, all right. Yeah. So currently, they don't have anything. So they have to reassess everything and adjust their plans right away. So this okay. is my aha number one when I interviewed my aha hero. The first is you have to be agile. So currently, what they have done is to recreate their marketing plans for the entire year. So before, they just follow the usual calendar of events, like you've mentioned, like Halloween, Christmas, everything. Now they have to recreate it from scratch so that they will not be tone deaf to what is happening on the ground. So, so give us an example. I get what you're saying. Give me an example. Yeah, they come up with a three-point plan. So first is they have to build the trust of the customers. So this is by showing that they value their safety and security and their convenience. So this is done through telling them that they are always sanit sanitizing the mall. They are enforcing government-mandated protocols in buying of goods and everything. And they also listen to the needs of the customers. So since they cannot do this on the ground, what they're doing is that they transitioned everything to the digital. So all posts um, relevant to what is happening, like they are putting COVID-related posts, like do's and those information they can lift from DOH and World Health Organization. Got it, got it. So PSA types. Yeah, this is okay. what they're doing right all now. Right. So that's number one then? That's number one. So also events that were canceled were also transitioned to digital, like the Earth Hour thing. So they okay. also yeah, so um they also mentioned that there are no lighthearted posts like gamifications and gimmicks that they usually do. The second point is that they have to reestablish the connection with customers. So once the um ECQ is lifted they believe that things are not going to go back to normal. They're predicting that at least 50% um, of um, mall goers are not going to go to the mall. So what they want to do, what they are trying to do is that people who are going to the mall are those who would want to celebrate the stuff that they have missed, like birthdays, anniversaries, and other stuff like that. So um, they plan to use these opportunities in their efforts. So these are going to be the ones that they are going to push in their um, in their social media and digital platform. So the third thing that they want to do is, this is for the restart. This is the new normal. So once they have seen everything, um, they plan to review their efforts that they have done and see which events would then merit a live activation and which ones are unnecessary and can be just transitioned to its digital version that will also save them millions in the process because apparently they really do pay millions for a single event because there are suppliers and everything contractors and all those things and so this brings me to my um aha number two which is providing value unusual because people are stuck at home and everyone is now on them they see this period as their chance to grow their online community by rethinking the way they do events. So their thinking is if they can't make people go to the malls for their events, they are going to bring the mall events to their homes. So what they're planning to do now is to line up online series of um, events that will appeal to their audience and will also bring value. So for instance, a lot of their... Um, audience are moms so they are planning to do 
um, an online series that would be giving advice to moms on how to cope up during these trying times. And also, since, of course, there are mall shows of bands and everything in the malls, they are going to do virtual gigs for a cost. And they are also to also stay relevant. They are also going to create something that would highlight the frontliners and all their efforts during this time. Um, aside from that, they also con want to continue to provide value to their tenants and help them and support them by giving them exposure to their Facebook groups as well. Because they believe that by promoting these partners, it will be a win-win situation for both parties. Um, since they can no longer promote them through events and their usual marketing efforts in the mall, um, they are doing um, promotions of their services which includes like surveys for the audience for the restart, um, which restaurants allow takeouts and the delivery services available, available bank services, sharing of tenants, COVID-related news. So those are some of the things that they are doing right now. So those are my two ahas. For the um, my reflection here is, um, well, it's a very personal reflection because uh i i don't really i mean i listen to you and dandy and um i think uh part of it is um, my, my bias against malls to begin with i don't go to malls i dislike malls i might even go to malls now because nobody's there yeah um so i don't i don't i feel like malls have to dig deeper i didn't feel like i heard anything and of course that's not that's neither your fault nor dandy's where I'm convinced they're creating value unusual. I think, yes, they're trying to stay in the face of people from a marketing perspective. And again, this is my prejudice against malls, but I just don't see anything that I feel like fundamentally where they're adding value to their stakeholders. And I'd like to see, um, I'd like to maybe see more examples. Again, this is no fault of your own. Um, if there's nothing to dig up, no matter how much you dig up, there's nothing you could, you'll come up with where um, I feel like they're uh, providing uh, solid value, you know? not just trying to keep themselves in the marketing airwaves, uh, so to speak. No? I don't know. You might want to challenge me on that because I, 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 admittedly, I have, I have a bias and a prejudice and a skepticism about the, the, the whole value of malls to begin with, even in pre-COVID times. Uh, Maybe you have other, maybe you believe that they are doing something or another that is uh, um, creating real value for their stakeholders. I don't know. Well, um, really, one of the values that malls give, even, even before, is that the reason why people congregate inside malls is because of air conditioning, right? <laughs> because we're such a warm country. People... Yeah actually go to the malls to cool down. So that's really one. I mean, but this it's a it's a thing with malls. I mean, I mean your point is right. Their lifeblood isn't people congregating. So now that that's not possible, it is really hard. And it is I would like to say or I'd like to think that this is an ongoing story. Perhaps um when we interview um mall um personnel in the future, maybe next week or in two weeks time, maybe we get new strategies new answers but really it is this is the bane of mall chains existence it's really it's the nature of their business is getting people together it's this community it's this family friendships um being together inside the mall so it's interesting to see to follow this story okay um, so that's that's interesting um is that a point of fact or is that your opinion dandy that mall, I never looked at it that way. I always thought you go to malls to buy stuff. Um, I never thought of malls as, uh, I never thought of malls as uh, community gathering places. Um, I certainly never use malls to community gather. It's not my idea. It's like, I'm actually the antithesis. Like there's too many people in the mall. I don't want to be there. So, is, but is that a fact? I mean, yes, it is an yes. people together. So if I may share my personal experience, Andre, um, I personally choose where I'm going to meet my friends on the basis that is it cold enough? Is it comfortable enough? In the mall. 
Yeah. It has to be a mall. So why can't it be a random Starbucks that's cold enough? Or I mean, but why does it have to be a mall? Because Andre you can go to a mall without actually spending anything. Yes. And just ah, go and there you go. Out. I that's see. Okay. I see. I see. I see. Just All right. Out okay. So. Spending. You, you understand now how my objections and my skepticism are totally unfounded because I, I don't know anything. Okay, so okay. Uh, Mina gets an identical four. Uh, okay. It's been instructive. I will certainly spend some time, like Holy Week, discerning about malls and the role of malls in our society. And it's I important like, in the Philippine society, in the Philippine yes, I, I feel like I have sinned against malls and that I need to ask forgiveness from this whole spirituality of malls um so i will come back a better mall person with deeper, with deeper more wholesome embrace of the truth of malls no but you know i i'm making a little bit of light of it but um you have opened my mind to to my eyes to to look at malls a bit differently and if that's the case then i see a brighter future for them uh or at least some hope Anyway, thank you for that. It's been another uh, learning um, experience. So good idea to focus on malls, two perspectives. Although it looks like you guys read the same press release. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. I just have to sneak that one in. Okay. So okay, thanks. so since we have, yeah. we have three minutes left, so I guess we can now proceed to rounding up our um, three uh, keywords for the day. Anybody want to jump in? But I think it's you really have to be agile during these times or because you really don't know what's going to happen next. So that's mine. For me, it's, uh, the word is rethink. Um, especially for malls or for a lot of businesses, it's a challenge how to rethink the core of your business, the core of your department. For example, for me, as example, it's the events department. Another thing, okay. We're in the basis of congregating people. Now, what do we do? What's our... And then you have to go deep into, okay, what's your main purpose as a department, as an events department? So it's really about rethinking. And when you rethink, it's going back to the core of um, your mission as a department, as a team, as a company, as an organization. Okay, since right. you took my idea for rethink, I would probably um, say um, sensitivity. Because, um, like in Mina's example, um, they're they're doing all of these little tweaks so that um, they're not tone deaf to the situation of consumers or their employees. So I think sensitivity is also a good keyword. Andre. Uh, well, I would certainly agree with uh, rethink, um, and all rethinks. Uh, need to begin as with our 100R methodology. Begins with who? With what? Begins with who, right? So they have to look at their constituents, their customer base, um, and understand how life has changed for these people. And uh, that's where they will find the pivots and the iterations and the, and the agility to, to stay relevant and to create value. But it's hard to believe that, it would be hard to believe that mall constituencies, the customer base from pre-COVID to post-COVID, um, that nothing changed, right? Um, so what are those fundamental changes and how do malls cope uh, would be my key thought. All right, guys, thank you. All right, thanks. And thank you once again, guys, for watching today's episode of AHA Biz. Tune in again tomorrow for your dose of bleeding edge insights and practices that shape our business unusual in the new normal. So uh, we have other upcoming webcasts. So if we have one Karen, later, yeah, we have one later. Uh, so to have have challenge job jobs ventures in the new normal. Where are the jobs going to come from? Yep, we're going to yep. be talking about that. All right. All right. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Thank you.